What will be the price of any asset? This asset could be a company, a factory, a building, an apartment, a share, or a bond. This is equal to the present value of all future cash flows. So we need to get the present value for any amount of money we receive in the future because of this asset. So, for example, if we have a stock or a share, what will be the price of this share? So every time you have a share, the company when it makes profit, they will distribute dividends. Therefore, the price of a share will be equal to the present value of all future dividends. And that's why, based on this formula, we can have a model called dividend discount model. Get the first letter for each word, so it will be DDM. So what do you mean by the word discount? It means get the present value. What do you mean by dividend? So we need to get the present value of these future dividends, which is will give us the share price. Therefore, we have different types of dividend discount model. Number one is a one period dividend discount model, which means we will hold the share for only one year. So let's assume that our effective annual interest rate is 10%. And we have here only one year. After one year, we receive a dividend of $1 and then we will sell the share for $10. So can you tell me what will be the price today? So we need to use the present value of all future cash flow we receive which means we need to get the present value of dividends after one year and the present value of the share price after one year. Therefore, which formula we're gonna use? We will use the present value of single cash flow, which is present value equal future value divided by open bracket one plus interest rate close bracket to the bar end. So we'll say that the price today is equal to dividend in year one plus the price in year one divided by open bracket one plus interest rate close bracket to the power one. So let's substitute with the number, the price today at year zero is equal to one plus 10, all of this divided by open bracket, one plus 10% to the power one. So this will give us $10 today. So this means that we could sell this share for $10 today, or this share is worth $10 today. Another type is two period DDM, which means we will hold the share for two periods. Let's assume that we have the same annual interest rate, which is 10% per annum. We have two years, year zero and year one. In year one, we will get a dividend of $1. In year two, we'll get a dividend of $1. Then we will sell the share for $11.1 at the end of year two. So in order to get the price of the share today, we need to get the present value of all future cash flow. So we need to get the present value of the dividend in year one, the dividend in year two, and the selling price in year two. So we'll use the present value of single cash flow formula which is present value equal to future value divided by open bracket one plus i close bracket to the power n. So how many times we will use the present value of single cash flow? We will use it twice. Why? Because we have two period dividends count model. Therefore, our price today at time zero equal to dividend one divided by open bracket one plus interest close bracket to the power one plus in year two, we will have dividend plus we will sell the share. So we'll get the price divided by open bracket one plus I close bracket to the power two. Let's substitute with numbers. So our price today is equal to dividend in year one is one divided by open bracket one plus interest rate of 10% close bracket to the power one plus in year two, we'll get a dividend of one plus we will sell the share for a selling price of 11.1 divided by open bracket one plus 10% close bracket to the power two. This will give us $10. Another type of dividend discount model is multiple period dividend discount model, which means I will hold the share for many periods, such as two periods, three periods, four periods, five periods, or so on. Therefore, let's assume that we have an effective annual interest rate of 10%. Then we have here year zero, one, two, so in year one, I will get $1, in year two, I will get $1, in year three, I will get $1, as a dividend and then I will sell the share at the end of year three for $12.31. So we will use the present value of single cash flow formula, which is the present value is equal to future value divided by open bracket one plus I close bracket to the bar M. So what will be the formula here for multiple period dividend count model? So I need to use this formula as many periods as we have. If we have three periods only, so I will use this formula three times if I have four periods, I will use it four times. If I have it five periods, I will use, use this formula five times. If I have it in periods, I will use it n times. So the general formula will be the price today at time zero is equal to dividend one divided by 
open bracket 1 plus i close bracket to the power 1 plus do the same for second dividend dividend at year 2 divided by open bracket 1 plus i close bracket to the power 2 plus so on until we reach the last one so it would be dividend at n plus the price at n divided by open bracket 1 plus i close bracket to the power n so let's apply this formula to our example here so our price today is we have dividend for three years and then we will sell the share at the end of year three so i will use this formula of the present value of single cash flow formula three times so in year one we have a dividend of one divided by open bracket one plus ten percent close bracket to the bar one plus in year two i will get a dividend of one so one divided by open bracket one plus ten percent close bracket to the bar two in year three you will get a dividend of one plus we will sell the share for a selling price of 12.31 divided by open bracket one plus ten percent close bracket to the bar three this will give us a share price of ten dollars For our company life cycle, it has different stages. So in our x-axis here, we have time. And then this is the shape of our company life cycle. The first stage is the introduction phase. It's followed by gross phase, which means the company gross grow at a very high rate. And then we reach the maturity phase, which means the company is stable. And then it's followed by decline phase. Usually companies avoid the decline phase by investing in research and development and innovation. Therefore, they could avoid the decline phase. And that's why in accounting, we have something called the ongoing concern, which means we assume that companies will last forever. Therefore, when we talk about a company at a maturity phase, which is called a mature firm or a mature company, a stable, it means that the market is saturated, which means the growth rate will be zero, which means it doesn't grow, it has the same size, or the growth rate will be low and stable. So, if we know that it will continue forever and the growth rate is zero, which formula are we gonna use? We will use ordinary perpetuity. But if we know that the growth rate will be low and stable, such as 1% every year forever or 2% every year forever, so we will use a growing perpetuity formula. Therefore, if we have a mature firm and we would like to get the present value of ordinary perpetuity or growing perpetuity, all what we need is only the first year of the maturity stage because I know that it will continue forever and then you use the ordinary perpetuity formula or the growing perpetuity formula. Another example of dividend discount model is constant or zero gross dividend. So let's assume that we have an effective annual interest rate of 10% per annum and then we have here in year one we receive a dividend of one dollar and then it will continue forever we receive every year $1 forever. And that's why we put here dots on the timeline. So what will be our formula? Since it will continue every year forever and we have the same cash flow, so we will use our ordinary perpetuity formula, which means the present value at time zero is equal to the cash flow at year one. Remember that there must be one year difference or one period difference, which means if my first cash flow is in year one, my present value will be in a year before, which is year zero, divided by interest. So if I'd like to apply it here in dividend, so it says that the price today is equal to dividend at year one, which means there is one period difference divided by effective annual interest rate. So let's substitute in our example here. The price at time zero, which is today, is equal to the dividend in year one, which is $1, divided by our effective annual interest rate of 10%. So this will give us the price of $10. Another example of dividend discount model is growing dividend. So from its name, what do we mean by growing dividend? It means that the dividend will grow every year by a constant percentage. So let's assume that we have an effective annual interest rate of 10% per annum, and we have a gross rate of 2% per annum. So in year one, we will receive a dividend of $1, but Every year, this dividend will increase by 2% forever. And that's why I put dots, which means it will continue every year forever. And above the dots, I put 2%, which means it will grow every year by 2%. Therefore, if it will continue forever, so I know that we need to use the present value of perpetuity formula. If the cash flow will grow by a constant percentage, so we need to use growing perpetuity. So the present value today at time zero is equal to the cash flow in year one divided by interest rate minus growth rate. So if we'd like to 
adjust the formula here for dividend so i will say the price today p0 is equal to dividend at year one by the way you can use dividend or cash flow they're the same divided by i minus g so let's substitute in our example here the share price today at time zero is equal to dividend in year one which is one divided by interest rate of 10 percent minus gross rate of two percent so this will give us one divided by eight percent which is equal to 12.5 dollars When we talk about company life cycle, on our x-axis we have time, on our, then we have the different stages of company life cycle. The first stage is introduction, followed by growth, followed by maturity. And we mentioned before that maturity means that the company will be stable, which means the growth rate will be zero or it will be low and stable. If it's zero, we use the present value of ordinary perpetuity. If it's low and stable, we use the growing perpetuity formula. So let's assume that we have a growth firm. What do we mean by gross firm? A firm at the gross stage, which means the firm will have one or two or three or many years in the gross phase, and then it will go into maturity phase. So in order to calculate the share price of this firm, what shall we do? We need to get how many years? So I need to get all the years of the gross phase. For example, if we'll have three years of high gross, so I need to get here the present value of each year, plus the first year of maturity, because I know that at maturity it will continue forever, so we're gonna use the perpetuity formula, which means it will continue forever. Therefore, I need all the years of the growth phase, plus the first year of maturity phase only. So, we have another example about dividend discount model, which is called super normal growing dividend. And this refers to a company at the growth phase, where they will distribute higher dividends at the beginning, and then it will move into maturity phase, which means they will have a stable dividend, which means dividend will not change, or if it changes, it will change by a constant percentage. So let's assume that we have an interest rate of 10% per annum, and then we have here in year one, we will receive year two, three. In year one, we receive dividends of $4. In year two, we receive dividend of $2. In year three, you will receive a dividend of $1 that will continue every year forever. And that's why we put dots. Therefore, for year one and two, we will receive the dividend only once, and that's why we will use the present we will use the present value of single cash flow. So the present value is equal to future value divided by open bracket one plus i close bracket to the bar m. But what about year three and afterwards? It will continue every year by receiving one dollar dividend. Therefore, this is an example of perpetuity or denary perpetuity. Therefore, we need to use the present value for ordinary perpetuity, which is the present value at time zero is equal to cash flow at year one divided by I. So what will be the share price today? So it will be the dividend in year one divided by open bracket one plus I close bracket to the bar one plus do the same for the dividend in year two divided by one plus I to the power two and so on until we reach the first year of maturity. Let's call it DM divided by in straight then this will give me the present value of one period before my first cash flow so in order to get it back to year zero we need to divide by one plus i to the power n minus one why because remember the present value of perpetuity is always one period before my first cash flow look at this example when perpetuity will start in year three i will get one dollar dividend that will continue forever so if i use the perpetuity formula I will get the present value one period before, which is year two. Let's apply this formula on our example here. So we'll say that the price today is equal to, the dividend in year one is four, so we'll use the present value of single cash flow. So it will be four divided by open bracket, one plus 10% close bracket to the bar one, plus the present value of the dividend in year two. So we'll use the present value of single cash flow. It will be two divided by open bracket, one plus 10% close bracket to the bar two, Plus in year three, you will get $1 dividend that will continue forever. So we need to use the present value for ordinary perpetuity. So it will be one divided by 10%, but one divided by 10%, it will give us the value in year two. So we need to get it back to year zero, which means we need to move backward two years. So we need to divide all these by open bracket, one plus 10% close bracket to the power two. So this will give us a share price of $13.55. Let's get another example about super normal growing dividend, where our dividend will increase every year at the maturity phase by a constant percentage. 
So let's assume that we have an effective annual interest rate of 10% per annum. Here we have years, and then in year one, we receive a dividend of $4, in year two, a dividend of $2, in year three, a dividend of $1 that will continue every year forever, but it will increase every year by 2%. Therefore, the dividend in year one and two will receive it only once. Therefore, we will use the present value of single cash flow, which is the present value is equal to future value divided by open bracket, 1 plus i close bracket to the power n. In year 3, we will get a dividend that will continue forever. That's why we'll use the perpetuity formula. But the amount of the dividend will increase every year by a constant percentage. Therefore, we will use the present value of growing perpetuity, which is the present value of time 0 is equal to cash flow at period 1 divided by i minus g. Therefore, what will be the general formula of the super normal growing dividend? The price today is equal to the dividend at year 1 divided by open bracket 1 plus i close bracket to the power 1 plus the dividend in year 2 divided by open bracket 1 plus i close bracket to the power 2 plus so on, keep repeating the formula until you reach the first year of dividend at maturity phase which we call it dn divided by i minus g even if the dividend will be constant it means that the growth rate will be 0 so you can put here g equals 0 so you can use this formula as a general formula but remember, once we get the present value of perpetuity, it will be one period before my first cash flow. So in order to take it to time zero, we need to divide by open bracket, one plus i close bracket to the power, n minus one. Why do we use n minus one? Because the present value of perpetuity is always one period before my first cash flow. In this example, my perpetuity starts in year three. So the present value will be in year two, one period before. So let's substitute in this example. The price today is equal to the dividend in year one, which is four, divided by open bracket one plus 10%. We use the present value of single cash flow, plus the dividend in year two is two. So we will use the present value of single cash flow. So it will be two divided by open bracket, one plus 10% close bracket to the power two, plus perpetuity will start in year three. So I need to use the growing perpetuity formula. So it will be one divided by 10% minus 2%. This will give me the value at year two, but we need to move back to year zero. Therefore, I need to divide all these by open bracket, one plus 10% close bracket to the power two. This will give us $15.62.